good evening from Beijing and uh, good morning and good afternoon to colleagues and friends in the Americans and Europe. I'm uh, Yan Xiaoli, Senior Program Officer of EMBA, International Bandwidth Return Organization. Welcome all of you to the EMBA webinar session, our bamboo for conservation of endangered species. This is the last session of EMBA webinar series under the theme Bamboo for Environmental Management. Same as before, my colleague Mr. Chong Chong Long is with me to moderate this session. Bamboos are widely distributed across Asian, Americans, and Africa, covering an uh, ever uh, covering an uh, area of over 30 million hectares. They are an integral part of forest ecosystems, providing vital ecosystem services. According to the EMBA's latest published book named the World Checklist of Bamboo at Rattan, there are 1,642 bamboo species globally. This implies the bamboo diversity is one of the most important components of the biodiversity but also represents the, a significant and fundamental habitat for a number of the world's most iconic and endangered species that rely on bamboos for their survival, such as the giant panda, the red panda in Asia, and the mountain gorillas, the, ba uh, the, the, the bear monkeys in Eastern Africa, and certain times a lemur in Madagascar. The sustainability of bamboo habitat is easily and normally neglected when talking conservation of endangered species. More research and knowledge needed to learn the dynamics of bamboo habitat and endangered species, such as how many bamboo needed if the population of endangered species grow how bamboo adapt to climate change, which will in turn affect the conserving uh, the endangered species. So bamboo is also associated with economic valuable products with uh, over uh, 60 billion US dollars of trading value annual, uh, annually, and also as cash income uh, uh, resources for rural areas. This, uh, adaptive and uh, systematic uh, approach should be in place as the conservation not only means their uh, bamboo habitat for the indigenous species, but also the ecotourism and the livelihoods associated with people. So today's session will shed light on the role of bamboo in conserving indigenous species and hope to shape some ideas to deepen research and knowledge or actions or responses as well from the interactive uh, discussion. The session will begin with uh, three presentations from our panelists and the following by panel discussion. And uh, if you have any questions, please write in Q&A section. We will deliver to our panelists as we may not uh, be able to uh, answer all your questions today. Uh, just leave your email in the feedback form, then we can respond to you later. So the, feed uh, the feedback form you can by click the link provided in the chat box in the right hand. Now I would like to introduce our distinguished panelist for today. First, uh, Dr. Chiao Lu. Uh, associate, uh, associate Professor of Yunnan Forestry Technological College. Uh, due to personal reasons, uh, uh, Professor Yang Yuming is unable to join us today. So Dr. Chao Lu, uh, well, on behalf of uh, process, uh, Professor Yang Yuming, will introduce the importance of bamboo for uh, biodiversity conservation. Uh, following by the um, uh, Mr. Christopher uh, Mashabi, Senior Warden in charge of National Wildlife uh, Re uh, Reserve, Uganda Wildlife Authority. He will tell us the conservation story of mountain gorillas 
and the golden monkeys with bamboo in U uh, Uganda. And uh, Professor uh, Jian Guo Liu, uh, he's the regional uh, council chair in sustainability and the distinguished uh, um, professor of Center for, Sys uh, for Systems Integration and Sustainability, uh, Michigan State University. Professor Liu will share his research and insights on how to couple pandas, people, and planet for their sustainability. Now, I would like to invite our first presenter, Dr. Chao Lu. Dr. Chao Lu obtain, uh, obtained her uh, PhD in ecology from Xishuang Banna Tropical uh, Botanic Garden, Chinese Academy of Sciences. She has been engaged in forest ecology research more than 10 years and focusing on the uh, effects of a global change on soil uh, ecosystem. Uh, Dr. Chiao, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Uh, good evening from Kunming, Yunnan. Um, I'm Chiao. Uh, it's a, a big pleasure for me uh, to give a presentation uh, on behalf of uh, Professor Yang Yiming. Um, Professor Yang has been with uh, field trips these days, uh, so he gave me uh, the chance to be here to share some knowledge about bamboo for conservation of endangered species. The content uh, includes three parts. The first one is significance of bamboo biodiversity. Second is bamboo for biodiversity conservation. And the last issue is for conservation of endangered species. Let's go to the first part significance of bamboo biodiversity. Bamboo biodiversity itself play a key role in construction of the habitat and providing food for many various species, for its numerous species and wide geographical distribution. Uh, I, I believe many of you uh, are very familiar with uh, this figure, this picture, yeah. The worldwide distribution of uh, bamboo species uh, from Asia, um, uh, North Australia to Africa to America. Um, just as mentioned by Ms. Lee, there are 70 genera and more than 1,600 uh, species of bamboo in the world, covering a total area of over 30, over 30 million hectares and widely distributed between the north 46 degree and the south of 47 degree in the tropic, subtropic and temperate regions of all continents except Europe. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I also think uh, you are very familiar with morphology and habit diversity of bamboo. Uh, just like uh, give a quick review about these uh, pictures. And landscape diversity of bamboo forests. Just let's see these pictures. Okay, now we can come to this conclusion. Uh, distinct biological characteristics of various bamboo species and bamboo forest landscape support biodiversity worldwide. Um, how bamboo functions for biodiversity conservation? Let's go to the second part. From this study, this research, um, you can say uh, the uh, research results. Um, for example, the compar comparability index uh, beta diversity was very small among the three bamboo forests. 
Uh, that means uh, there are more species coexistence in the same region. Um, we may imply from this research various bamboo species facilitate coexistence. Doctor, uh, Doctor, Doctor Chiao, please uh, uh, move Sorry. your slides. It, it, it don't move. Um, maybe I should refresh it because I uh, click the, the, the screen uh, and the slides uh, is changing uh, from my screen. OK, OK, thank you. Yes, now it moves. OK. Yeah. Uh, just now, uh, we came to this uh, uh, picture. No, this one. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chiang, could you put it in the full screen? Yeah, now it's uh, in full screen. Maybe uh, 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 there's a time lag. OK, OK, thank you. Just now, I mentioned um, we may imply from this research for rice bamboo species facilitate coexistence of different plant species. Uh, so uh, that means um, bamboo uh, forests or bamboo species uh, can coexistence with uh, other species. Secondly, uh, bamboo facts for uh, conservation of animal diversity. From this review paper, uh, we can say um, comments. Bamboo provides support to many species of wildlife, um, such as deer, pigs, leaf monkeys, and bamboo rats. Bamboo also maintain insect diversity. Um, for example, leaf hoppers. Uh, from this research uh, in 2018, um, 60 general and 117 species of bamboo feeding uh, leaf hoppers in southwest China um, have been identified. Generally, um, we may regard leaf hoppers as a um, um, pest, but from the angle of nature, um, biodiversity sustains. Moreover, bamboo maintains soil animal diversity. Um, from this research, uh, we can know the soil animal diversity level of bamboo stands was between plantations and uh, uh, natural forests. Um, we might imply that um, the bamboo stands is uh, a little better habitat for soil animals than uh, some artificial plantation of the other tree species. Bamboo also funds for conservation of uh, microbial uh, diversity. Uh, the endophytic diastrophe with Bambusa rubiana showed great diversity. Also for bacterial in rhizome soil. Uh, this research, uh, the result shows the bacterial Population diversity is abundant in Bashania, Fijiana, rhizosphere soil. So uh, just now, um, uh, we have a quick review about the uh, bamboo species for uh, conservation of biodiversity. Now let's uh, go to the K issue: bamboo for conservation of endangered species. Uh, in this part. 
um, I'd like to uh, give an overview of some typical uh, endangered species. Um, many of them are uh, animal stars. First one, mountain uh, gorilla. Uh, I believe almost everyone knows this creature, gorilla. Um, mountain gorilla is a critical endangered species in the world. Uh, today, we have a very important presenter uh, gave to, uh, to give a, a systematic uh, review about this creature. So uh, let's uh, uh, escape to, the, uh, now, uh, to another uh, species or the genera. Um, bamboo lemur. Bamboo lemurs are definitely bamboo specialists. And um, in general, uh, different bamboo lemurs uh, can uh, zoom uh, different parts of the same bamboo uh, species. Uh, in series of uh, studies or researchers, um, we can know the bamboo species from these three uh, genera are very important for bamboo lemur's life. And at the same time, um, Endemic bamboo species, uh, 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 endemic bamboo species in Madagascar is also important food for great bamboo lemur. From this, <coughs> excuse me, from this picture, um, maybe you have seen a uh, climate change. Yeah, uh, this uh, a study. Uh, in, in, in is on the uh, key issue about climate change. Um, this is a comment. Mechanically demanding and nutritionally per bam bamboo column is eaten only during the dry season by great bamboo lemur. However, climate change is projected to threaten many great bamboo lemur populations by prolonging dry season feeding. Oh, very cute. Oh, very poor creatures. Another um, animal star, giant panda. Giant panda um, is undoubtedly a wildlife star and well known globally. And um, it is also a bamboo specialist. Today, we also have another very important presenter uh, to give a uh, detail, uh, uh, information, knowledge about this uh, very cute uh, creature. Uh, Dr. Doc, uh, Dr. Uh, Chiao, the slide uh, is not moving. So please move oh. the slides when you speak. Thank you. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, something wrong with the slides. So, is it moving? No, not moving. Uh, I'm so sorry. I have to uh, close it and open it again. Yeah, please. Maybe the Wi-Fi signal is not so is not so good. Is the slide moving now? Uh, hello, hello. Miss Lee, Dr. Long, is the slide moving? Uh, hello, doc, uh, Dr. Chiao. Now, uh, I don't see it's moving. Please do again. Okay. Is the slide moving now? Now it's moving. Now it's moving. Okay. Please. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, just now I mentioned uh, the uh, animal star, giant panda, uh, but uh, it, it's not um, um, 
my um, region, uh, my area. So um, um, let's escape to um, Red Panda. Uh, the original distribution of Red Panda is Bhutan, China, India, Myanmar, and Nepal. Uh, from U zones uh, starting in 1991, we can know in Long Term National Park, Nepal, uh, red pandas uh, were habitat specialists um, that preferred for Jahapur bamboo forests. And the leaves of this single bamboo species comprised of uh, 54 to 100 percent of the uh, red pandas diet seasonally in this region. So um, the bamboo is very important for red panda um, in this nature reserve, in, in this national park. In China, uh, in Fengtongzai Nature Reserve, um, we, can, uh, we can know uh, the bamboo basal diameter is, is a very important factor uh, for red panda to select uh, its habitat. Uh, in Gali Gong Mountains, another nature reserve in China, um, we can know the red panda's stable food uh, bamboo covered seven species, uh, but six of them uh, belongs to uh, belong to Fajizia. Another endangered species, Taking. Um, from this research, we can know taking at Wanglang Nature Reserve, also in China, uh, usually used the habitats with great bamboo coverage and bamboo density. In another nature reserve in Tibet, China, uh, Nubago Nature Reserve, forest which consists of Pagesia species and conifer species is critical habitat for packing. Another animal uh, 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 animal stars against elephants. Um, so um, I think uh, many of you may know um, China, uh, um, part of uh, Asia elephant uh, is uh, distributed in Yunnan province and uh, the bamboo shoots is also the elephant's food source. From this research, named Evaluation of Habitat for Asian ele Elephants in Xishuang Batna, Yunnan, China, uh, we can know the primate factor affecting habitat quality was the vegetation, specifically the bamboo forest. Um, it's clearly uh, that the a bamboo forest, uh, the bamboo shoots, uh, are important for our uh, elephant uh, life uh, in Yunnan province. Another very cute uh, monkey, Yunnan snob nosed monkey. Uh, it's also called black and white snob nosed monkey. Um, this primate species uh, that distributes at the alpine area with highest elevation comparing with the other primate species. From this research just published last year, uh, uh, we can know the information. There are 13 bamboo species distributed in this monkey species habitat. Um, here it's the list, is the uh, bamboo species list. From the list we can know, um, a bamboo species from the Fagesia genera is very important for the um, mountain uh, species, um, uh, such as uh, this uh, snub-nosed monkey and uh, giant panda, takin, and red panda.
when we turn to some suggestion on conservation of endangered species, um, maybe we can uh, give a big comments on this issue. Um, here, I'd like to um, give two uh, issues or items from Bamboo's eyes. Uh, conserving the wildlife's habitat of endangered species should be at the first place. Yes, the habitat is very important, which comprises food, maybe bamboo included, and the space for their activity. Um, at the same time, moreover, global change has effects on almost every species on the earth. So how various bamboo species, especially food sources of endangered species, respond to global change, and how to mitigate the effects should be taken seriously into account. Um, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Uh, Chiao Lu. Uh, that's, a, that's a great presentation that talks three main aspects regarding the biodiversity conservation, the, the, uh, the uh, diversity of bamboo species itself, and uh, its uh, uh, function to the ecosystem services, and also it provides the uh, main uh, habitat and the food resources for the uh, endangered species uh, globally. Thank you very much. And now I will uh, I would like to invite the next speaker, uh, Mr. Christopher Marshaby, uh, senior uh, warden uh, uh, in charge of uh, a national park in Uganda. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Christopher Marshaby, with a background of uh, social science, uh, social sciences from a university in Nairobi, he used to work for uh, Uganda Wildlife Education Center and the Education Officer with focus on raising uh, community awareness on national park governance uh, rules and conservation importance, setting in uh, enabling environment to benefit from the uh, conservation efforts for the communities and solving uh, human and animal um, conflicts and extra. And now, Mr. Uh, Mashabi works as a senior warden uh, in charge of the Mangahinga uh, 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 National Park, take care of all the uh, conservation efforts of the uh, national park now. So, uh, Christopher, floor is yours. And I am here to present to you um, bamboo for conservation of the major species. And the major species that are deal or survival of bamboo. We have found a major two that is the mountain gorillas and the uh, golden monkeys, uh, the rare species of monkeys that live only in the massive area, and the uh, mountain gorillas uh, live in the Kiburuga area. And in really international national park in Uganda. Now, these animals survive for live 
time, uh, most of their time or life, uh, depending on um, bamboo. Bamboo is one of the grasses not to be fast growing and therefore are good as the food for these animals at this stage above. There are four national parks where bamboo are found in Uganda, and this is the uh, National Park, Mountain Gold National Park, Park, Windy Integrity National Park, and Ganga Gold National Park. Uh, there are other areas where bamboo is in Uganda, but these are uh, spread all over the country. Okay. Uh, gorillas were discovered in October 17, 1932, as a subspecies of some gorillas. The difference is that it has a long hair, gold, and teeth, and slightly bigger. Now, the two parts were only mountain and at an elevation of about 1,600 meters above sea level. Gorillas spend most of their time dwelling in the bamboo, particularly during the time when they are sprout, when they are sprout, when the bamboo is sprouted. And this is naturally in March, in May, and September, November. Gorillas, like every month, feed bamboo ecosystem for food because it is one of the highest. Uh, nutri nutritious food um, of um, non gorillas it takes it taking about 90% of bamboo as their food. The golden month is taking about 60% of uh, bamboo and the particular bamboo shoots. An average gorilla male takes in uh, about uh, 23 kilograms of food and the female takes in about 18 kilograms of food. And like I can say, the diet of mountain gorillas in both Yindi and Gahinga is mainly bamboo, but it also takes in other vegetation. They are about um, about 142 plant species uh, that mountain gorillas feed on and they eat leaves, shoots, stems, on plants, and this is about 86 in total of the food, but out of 86, about 90% of the 86 is bamboo. Uh, yeah, and then 3% uh, is uh, is flowers. They eat flowers, and this takes about 3%. And then 2% of fruits. And then sometimes they eat insects, they eat ants, they eat grubs, and also rarely do. Uh, mountain gorillas taking water. The golden monkeys also use bamboo feet as its highest prayer, and that is about 60% um, of their diet. They also feed on other beaches on a very, very small scale, and also feed on 
uh, uh, move six and insects. Now, the other uses of bamboo, and as you may be aware, that uh, when life has been sustained, three, things, three or four things must be very, very key. Or three things, uh, four things are key. One is food. So the biggest nutrient of these animals is bamboo shoots. Bamboo shoots, as I said earlier, use that percentage of each of their feeding habits. Number two is protection and safety. Mountain gorillas camouflage around or within the bamboo forest and you can easily miss them or mistake them to be part of the forest as if they are bamboo as well. But they, their coating is looks more like bamboo or shoots if they are camouflaging right under there. They also use the bamboo stems for protection. They can easily turn around the stems if they observe uh, an enemy. They do also use the forest for babies. They go at the top of the uh, uh, stems where it is strong enough and break the bit of the bamboo stems from the bamboo stems to make a bed, and that's mainly by sub-adults, infants, and, uh, and juveniles. Although, the infants live more with, the, with, the, with the, their mothers. Uh, you could see from this picture uh, the representation of camouflage around the bamboo while they are taking their safety and, and, the, and, and the protection. Um, bamboo plays a significant role in, in, in the ecosystem as the plants are of thousands of uses. Uh, Golden monkeys also use uh, food as a source of food, I said earlier, but they also use it for protection. We put into the food uh, um, tops looking for seeds, looking for leaves, six. but on the ground, they feed basically on shoes. Golden monkeys also use bamboo for protection. They use bamboo for camouflage. Therefore, it's also a source of security, it's a source of safety to them as well, and it's a source of general livelihood in the ecosystem. Uh, when we look at bamboo being a very good source of livelihood for uh, monkeys and bamboo I mean, and, and the mountain gorillas, there, is, there are other use or users of uh, bamboo. Humans sometimes rival these two species of animals while they look for bamboo for other uses. And therefore, there is a very big list of bamboo and a production host in the wild and even in the homes where it is 
natural and or artificial planted, and therefore will cause a competition for food for these animals. There, if the forest, when these animals are reduced, then there is a very high risk of them becoming extinct. They are already a danger because their numbers are not high enough to be granted a status of being free, of being uh, uh, of enabling to reproduce and flourish even at a time when there are some uh, interferences in them. Therefore, uh, bamboo is, is key, is very important for the survival of the two endangered species of animals, primarily the mountain gorilla, where the numbers in the world only raised in the last 10 years from about 640 to 1064 currently. And the golden monkey, about, about 220 individuals in the whole world. Bamboo is a very, very important source of livelihood in the ecosystem for the two species of animals. I want to encourage the whole world to support bamboo for conservation of mango species of animals in the world. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. Thank you very much, Christopher. Um, I think because the, there's a many noises uh, during the background, so I'm not sure whether our attendee uh, will hear very clearly. But uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Christopher. Uh, I'm uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether the, uh, because there's many uh, noises uh, behind, so I'm not sure whether our attendee will uh, hear very uh, clear or not. But uh, uh, for your information, the presentation will be available on AIMBA's website, so you can you can download and have a look uh, for um, and also re uh, the recording of the webinar. So now I would like to invite our uh, uh, last presenter of today, uh, Professor Jian Guo Liu. He joined uh, uh, Mich uh, Michang uh, Michigan State University after compl uh, com uh, complementing, compl uh, completing his postdoctoral work at Harvard University. Professor Liu is a human environmental science scientist and a sustainability scholar. He holds the Rachel Carson Chair in Sustainability, is a university a distinguished professor, and serves as director of the Center for, Sustain so for Systems uh, Integration and Sustainability. He also is a founder of the International Network of Research on Coupled Human and Nature Systems. Professor Liu has uh, uh, served a variety of international and national com uh, committees and panels. He is coordinating leading author of global assessment of about uh, diversity and ecosystem services for APIS. He is also a member of the board of reviewing, uh, reviewing editors for science. Professor Liu was uh, recognized as uh, one of the influential researchers by the um, uh, Caravolt uh, uh, and Atlantic's uh, highly cited researchers list, and also received many awards, including being elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the uh, uh, American uh, Philosophical uh, Society, and named a fellow of the American Association for the advancement of sciences and extra. Uh, his research interests include coupled human and nature uh, systems, sustainability uh, system integration and modeling, uh, biodiversity conservation, 
uh, ecologic, uh, uh, ecological uh, economics, uh, ecosystem service, uh, environmental climate change, extra. So, yeah, Professor Liu, uh, floor opens for you. Uh, Professor Thank Liu, you. could yeah. you please share your PPT? Yes. Uh, Like I'm trying to find the right uh, fire. Uh, I saw the fire earlier uh, with, oh, okay. Uh, see. Uh, did you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Could you click on the share? Uh, uh, not yet. Could you uh, share? Yeah. Could you click on the share? And then select the, the PPT. Yeah, I I saw the PPT here. Here, okay. Can you see now or not? Uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, hmm. Okay, here. Yeah, we see it. Can you it's see coming. now? It's coming. Yeah. Coming, yeah. yes. Okay, great. Okay. So <clears throat> So thank you so much again for organizing this uh, important event. Uh, thank you for inviting me to participate in uh, this uh, uh, great uh, uh, important day, uh, webinar. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is pandas, people and planet coupling human and natural systems for sustainability. <clears throat> First, I will provide a little bit background information, then outline some of the research methods, and then I will focus on five insights that I got from our research. And as you all know, giant pandas are global environment icons. You had a wide distribution in the past. You occupy a larger proportion of China in the past, even including some parts of the neighboring countries. But nowadays, it only uh, distributed in a small proportion of the country in these uh, red areas, you can see, in three provinces, Sichuan, Gansu, and uh, Shanxi provinces. And in the past, a lot of people have done research on pandas, but they mainly focused on panda biology like how many baby pandas a, uh, a panda can have and uh, how much bamboo they can eat. Also in the wild, habitat for the pandas is mainly made of bamboo, and the bamboo is an understory species. Unlike many other species, bamboo had to depend on forest cover uh, at the top so that they can grow well. So forest as a cover, and also pandas like uh, gentle slopes and uh, in elevation uh, range uh, below uh, 3,750 uh, meters. And people are competing for panda habitat in many ways. They cut down timbers from the habitat of, for the pandas. They also uh, collect fuel wood and, uh, and also other non-timber products like traditional Chinese herb medicine, and they also uh, grazing in those areas, like uh, horses and other livestock uh, eat bamboo. And also um, to convert panda habitat for other human use, like cropland and uh, residential land. So our research goals are uh, first understand the complex interactions between pandas and people in all nature reserve, which I will introduce to you in a little bit. And secondly, is to apply the results and the methods from all known to regional, national, and global levels. And uh, I will share with you some of the methods that we used. First, we treat every place as a couple of the human natural systems. Here, the uh, 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 Couple of the human natural system is an integrated system where humans interact with the natural components. Like this diagram shows the human components, the natural components, 
and uh, humans affect natural systems. The changes in the natural systems affect uh, people also. Right? So uh, the pe both people and the natural component like uh, wildlife, plants, and they interact at the cross different uh, organization scales. And here is a map showing our study areas. Uh, the, my collaborators and I have been spending time there for 25 years. And this diagram show the colors indicated the elevation uh, levels range from uh, 1200 meters to more than 6000 meters. And Onun is a, a flagship nature reserve. It means that it receives exceptional support from the Chinese government as well as the international community. It was established in 1975. It is one of the largest nature reserves. It has about 200,000 hectares. It also has about 10% of wild pandas. Besides pandas and the many other uh, species, there are more than 5,000 local residents, which constitute a nice half of the human natural systems. So in many uh, natural reserves in China and uh, uh, other developing countries, a lot of reserves have uh, local people in it. This is different from developed countries. And so we use this conceptual framework to help us understand the interaction between pandas and people. And here at the top, the local resident, they have different activities like farming, and those activities will affect the forest and because pandas depend on the forest as habitat. So anything change in the forest will change the habitat for the pandas and also the distribution, the behavior, the population of the pandas. The change in pandas and uh, in their habitat will pump the um, government to um, design new policies and those new policies will uh, change um, uh, the behavior of local residents. So they will continue to have this impact on forest and pandas. So form a complex of feedback loops. And uh, of course, the abiotic factors like climate will change everything. Change pe affect people, affect forest, they affect the pandas. So that's a very important component. So we use different methods to collect data and face-to-face uh, -face interview with the local farmers and uh, to understand their concern and their uh, uh, attitudes and their behavior. And then we take field samples to understand the bamboo and other conditions. And then we use government document to understand the government policies. And then we use the remote sensing data to map the changes across the larger areas. So we use the systems integration to integrate everything, which is a holistic approach to integrate various components of carbon to human natural systems among different organization levels across space over time, also across different disciplines like uh, natural sciences, including ecology and uh, hydrology, uh, social sciences like uh, economics and uh, sociology, anthropology, and so on and so forth. And now I'm going to share five insights from research on pandas and people. The first insight is transforming panda habitat from loss to recovery. <clears throat> As this diagram shows, the panda habitat decreased over time and before the reserve was established, the decline was somewhat small, but after the reserve was established in 1975, the changes, the decline or the loss of habitat become much uh, faster. You know, the slope, it was much steeper, right? So this is surprising because the purpose of establishing the reserve is to provide have protection to the habitat for the pandas, but now we see the opposite way. So why? And we want to understand the reasons behind the panda habitat loss. And if we look at the human population size and the household dynamics in Onun, you can see 
since the establishment of the regime, the um, uh, population size and the household dynamics have increased dramatically. So with so many people, there are many activities. Farming is a major one. They grow food not only from themselves, but also sell the food to cities uh, on the market. And then with more household, also have more house construction, road construction, also hydropower plant to generate electricity for people. And then People also raise livestock grazing in the areas. And the fuel consumption is a major way of energy use. And the people use the fuel wood, like here, a pile of fuel wood in front of uh, almost every house. And you can see uh, people use the fuel wood to cook food for people and also cook food for pigs, and which is a major livestock inside the reserve. And in the winter time, it's very cold in the reserve, so people use a few wood here to heat up the houses. And as a result, you can see many areas in the reserve become deforested. And even at the top of the mountains, you don't see many trees left. So this kind of a surprising result was really uh, uh, important for the government to develop new policies. So one of the new policy is called Natural Forest Conservation Program. It started in 2001. The purpose was to prevent illegal harvesting. So each household was assigned to monitor forest parcels. Here you can see the gray areas of the forest parcel monitored by household. The other area are monitored by the staff member of the reserve. Okay, so each household receive about 900 yuan subsidies, which seems small right now. But uh, at that time, in 2001, it was a uh, substantial amount. It counts for about 20% of annual household income. Another conservation program is uh, called Eco Hydro Power Plan which started in 2002. The purpose was to generate electricity so the local resident can use more electricity um, at the lower price and then reduce the fuel wood consumption to protect the habitat for the pandas. So as a result, we see good news. The panda habitat began to recover in 2000, uh, starting in 2001. So here this red, uh, long show the gradual recovery of the habitat, right? So, and then inside two uh, indicate that the um, good conservation incentives can lead to bad conservation behavior. So I'm going to show you one slide here, which is the dynamics of household numbers in reserve. In the past, usually on average each year, um, only had about uh, 25 new households year after year. But in 2001, there were more than 100 new households. Why? As you may recall, there is a program called the Natural Forest Conservation Program. The program uh, gave household subsidies. So some of the household um, divide their members into different new households. So to take advantage of the subsidies. So if you have one uh, to divide the household into two, then you get a double amount of the subsidies. If you divide your household into three, then you get three times as many as uh, the subsidies. So that's a typical human behavior in response to policy. Inside three is to in invest in conservation wisely. So the government spent a lot of money and effort in conservation. One of the effort is to move people out of the natural reserve, but many people did not want to move out. Some people move out, even with the economic incentives, they move back because they could not get used to outside of the environment or somehow uh, sometimes the uh, promise was not fulfilled. So they move back to the reserve. 
So government develop a new strategy. So well, if you don't want to move out, so how about uh, build a large apartment complex with the indoor reserve, but far from the core area for the pandas? And guess what? How many people have moved to this apartment complex? No one. So why, even though the apartment is free? Because farmers depend on land and the, the uh, area uh, surrounding the apartment campus had no much land for the farmers. So without land, they cannot produce food and other products. So that's why they cannot uh, move there. So we propose a new approach which is to improve school education to help children go to college. So there are so many benefits for that. And why is economically efficient? Because the government does not need to spend so much money to uh, convince people to move out. Secondly, it's socially acceptable. Young people, children like to go to college. Their parents, their grandparents will be proud if the children, grandchildren can go to college. And also it's more ecologically effective because once those children move to college, they will not come back to the reserve anymore. So that means they will not have babies in the reserve anymore. So over time, the population size uh, of humans in the reserve will decline. And unlike older people, then uh, older people don't you know, have children anymore. So that's okay if they still stay inside the reserve. Insight number four is that Onu is connected with the rest of the world, social, economically, and environmentally. That's why we call it telecoupling. Right? Tele means distance, and this is a uh, um, very important globally increasing phenomena. I'm going to show you two examples. One is panda loans. So in nature reserve, uh, not just the wild pandas in the uh, forest, but also there are a lot of pandas in the breeding center. So the breeding program is very successful. In one year, they got 16 baby pandas born and all survived. And with more pandas inside the breeding center, so some of the pandas were sent out to zoos in other countries and in other places of China. So for a pair of pandas, other zoos in other countries will pay up to $1 million a year for uh, a number of years, maybe 10 or maybe 15 years. So that's a huge amount of money for panda conservation. So here it shows us, uh, the number of pandas living in zoos outside the Ordnung increased over time from less 20 in 1998 to 85 by the year 2010. Another telecarbon process is tourism, and not just pandas going out, but also people from around the world come to reserve to see the pandas and uh, take pictures, and then uh, also see the beautiful landscape. So since 1980, the number of tourists come to Onun uh, increased substantially and until 2008 and uh, the number of tourists dropped to more, almost zero because in 2008 some of you may remember there was a big earthquake near the uh, nature reserve so it destroyed the roads and so that the tourists could not go into the reserve. Insight number five, results and methods from Onun are useful to other places. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. One is to scale in the result from local to global couple of the human natural systems. Local means uh, on the nature reserve and then to the whole geographic range of the pandas and the to entire China to the entire world, planet Earth. And here this diagram shows uh, the loss and the recovery of panda habitat across the entire distribution range. Right? So here you see the patterns of change. It's very similar to this pattern of change in habitat in Ordnung Nature Reserve. And the first decline and then 
in 2001 began to increase, right, recover. So in 2016, the um, International Union of Conservation of Nature has removed pandas from the endangered species list, right? So this is good news. However, there is a still threat to the pandas. One of the major threat is um, uh, impact of climate change on bamboo species across the entire geographic range. So my colleagues and I have been doing research on how climate change could impact the bamboo species and then impact the pandas because the bamboo is a major food source for the pandas. Without bamboo, then pandas, pandas cannot survive. Here is a diagram shows the changes for the suitable area for the 11 bamboo groups. The many several dozens of bamboo species, we group them into different category based on their biological features. So here you can see 11 groups here, and then this is um, the uh, proportion of change in uh, suitable areas. And by the year 2060, um, so this dashed line means about this dashed line, then the habitat will get better. And then below this uh, dashed line, the habitat area for the palm, bamboo will get worse. So eight out of 11 groups of bam bamboo species will face bad, worse, uh, suitable uh, habitat areas. And that means the area suitable for bamboo species will decline dramatically. So we use data from two sources to uh, build the model. Uh, one source is the force panda census. And um, that we got the information about the bamboo distribution. Another source of data that we use to build the model is the remote sensing data. So you have this um, blue color and the orange color, but both of them show the similar patterns. Um, so I think that's very important to uh, verify our results, use different source of data to uh, uh, validate the model results. So that's something that we are looking into more, and uh, I think it's very important to develop conservation policy by incorporating climate change into the uh, conservation plan in the future. And now I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how the results from ONUN Nature Reserve can be used to understand issues beyond pandas and people at the national and the global scale. First is to apply the lessons and the experience we learned from uh, Onan Reserve to the nature reserve system in China. China now has more than 2,700 nature reserves. So the management of those reserves is very important. So um, they face a lot of similar problems as we saw earlier in the uh, Onan Nature Reserve. So my colleagues and I have been applied those uh, results and lessons uh, from Onan to other places to help manage the nature reserve system of China better. Another example that at the global level, I would like to share with you the comparison uh, in uh, global changes in human population size and number of households. So, uh, here we compare the rate of uh, increase in population size and the household number in both Onun and the world, right? First, in Onun, we find the household numbers increase much faster than population size. As um, we indicated earlier, this is the annual growth rate, and here uh, the population size and the uh, number of households. So in the past, and even now, a lot of people use the population size as an indicator of human impact on the environment and wildlife. But uh, we find actually household numbers are more important because households are the basic unit of uh, production and uh, consumption, especially in the rural area where biodiversity is mainly located. So this kind of result made up the thing uh, whether this kind of a phenomena is true or not in the rest of the world. 
So we um, analyzed data from 141 countries around the world. So what we found was very surprising. We see similar patterns, right? The number of household increased faster than number of people. And so that's kind of really interesting because the situation around the world is much different from on the nature reserve. You have uh, a lot of people in the cities and a lot of people in other countries, different cultural, different political and policy situations, but the uh, results are very similar in terms of uh, growth rate in population and uh, household numbers. So this demonstrated the power of using a small area as small as Ornum to understand the whole world, to understand the whole planet. And uh, it provides good information for us to um, scaling up the uh, uh, results to solve global challenges. Now I'm going to quickly summarize what we talk about. One is um, the interaction between pandas and people are complex and full of surprises. We saw a lot of surprises and uh, we, I just presented a couple here due to the time constraints. And um, also successful conservation efforts are those that benefit both pandas and people. Without consider the people's uh, needs, it's impossible to protect the pandas. And the results and methods from local level are useful for research and the conservation and the, at the regional, national and the global levels. Okay? And finally, I would like to point out it's very important to couple human and natural system for meeting human needs and also achieving uh, environmental sustainability. And finally, uh, for those who are interested in more of our research, we can uh, have the website and uh, you can visit the website. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Liu. A great presentation that provides a, 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 a systematic approach to deal with the uh, complexity of biodiversity conservation and the interaction between giant dependent and people, and also the uh, adaption. Uh, adapt, uh, adaptation and the dynamics, uh, uh, adaptation and the dyna uh, dynamics of policies and incentives to ensure the uh, uh, effectiveness and sustainability of uh, conservation efforts. I like the idea that successful conservation should benefit both the species and the human. And uh, Professor Liu also pointed um, pointed on that the climate change actually have, have an uh, um, impact on the bamboo species. So the eight out of 11 bamboo groups will be uh, strengthened uh, due to the climate change. So I think that might also uh, have the uh, impact on the flower flowering cycle of bamboos. So that implies the con uh, conservation policies and uh, also the uh, actions to uh, need to to mitigate and adapt to the climate change as well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Liu. And uh, now we have uh, del delivered the uh, three presentations. And now I, I think there's many questions um, and uh, our attending will ask. So now I over to all my colleagues to chair the uh, Q and A session for the panel discussion. Long over to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for three presenters with yeah. their pre <laughs> excellent presentation. Also, I would like to apologize to all attendees that today at internet some period it was not good, so it interrupt a lot, and we try to manage it at the same time. So at the beginning there was some problem. Especially Christopher, he stay far away in Uganda. Somewhere the internet not so good, so his audio was not so good. But um, we record all of the presentation here. We upload, upload in YouTube. If any part is not clear for you, you can check it again on YouTube. Then you can re uh, rehearse it again for the next time. At the same time, the PPTs 
we will also upload in our inbound website. If you want, you can download from there in PDF file. Yeah. So um, today we have several questions here for the panelists. Uh, first of all, I will give some questions. I will read some questions here for individual. And after that, we have some questions for all the panel for three of you. The first question is, I think it is for uh, Dr. Liu Chao. Yeah, do you have a study comparing biodiversity associated with bamboo forest and with tree plantation? Which ecosystem is more diversity? More diverse. Um, I see that it's uh, uh, Dr. Liu Chang. Uh, Chao Liu is already uh, give some answer. Could you please? Okay. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Long. Uh, yeah, I have seen the, uh, this question on the Q&A, the sections. Um, uh, actually, uh, I'm still a freshman in the bamboo area. Um, these days, I have searched for uh, the papers, the research about the uh, bamboo and uh, the uh, biodiversity, the correlation between the two parts. Um, actually, um, there are not too much um, uh, studies on that topic, um, which is uh, better, uh, bamboo forests or uh, tree plantations. So I think uh, it's worse to uh, go further to um, for the deep research in this area. Uh, to explore the correlation uh, between the uh, bamboo forests and the uh, tree plantations. Um, maybe uh, it, uh, it uh, will give the, uh, the confidence for us uh, to maintain the bamboo forests and to uh, protect the natural uh, bamboo forests because it's also important for biodiversity conservation. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. this is my comments. May I Thank add you, something yeah. here? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. So based on our experience, um, so on the plantation, usually there is no bamboo in it. Um, because uh, uh, in our situation, the bamboo are understory species. And the plantation usually did not create the condition for the bamboo to grow. So if we want to have bamboo in the plantation forest, we needed to uh, purposely plant some bamboo there too, or plant the, you know, th that way bamboo can grow under the plantation areas. But uh, through our field of research, we did not find much. And uh, so the recovery of bamboo and those uh, forests takes uh, quite a bit of time and uh, especially this um, clear cut. And uh, under this kind of condition, the bamboo cannot grow well because in the uh, understory species for the pandas and the, the moisture condition is not high. So um, in that case, it's better to have the primary forest. So the uh, bamboo uh, under the uh, cover of the forest. But I think it may be possible. We need to experiment trying to plant bamboo and um, under the plantation forest, maybe at the same time as uh, once the trees are, are big enough, then we can grow some bamboo underneath. So yeah, thank, th you. Th thank you, Professor Salu. Yeah, I think when we are talking about the biodiversity, I think yeah. that we are talking in many cases here. One is divert in terms of genetics, divert in terms of species, and divert in terms of uh, ecosystem or landscape in that one. So it, mm -hmm. it is also very difficult to compare in the kind of things. Bamboo, for example, they have more than 1,600 species of bamboo, and they have also number of bamboo species are shade tolerant, grow under the uh, tree canopies. Mostly mm -hmm. that in panda habitat, like Professor Luce mentioned there, there are also some bamboo species. They are uh, light demanding and prefer to grow in open area as well. But 
in terms of if you compare it, bamboo natural forest and tree plantation, there is very much different. In the natural bamboo forest, it also gets with natural tree and mix with all the other kind of associated communities, of all the plants there that is very different. But when we come to compare plantation, the same like tree or bamboo, it depends on how, how you plant it. Sometimes you plant monocrop, only one species of trees. Bamboo also depends, sometimes you only plant one. The second is how you manage them. You allow undergrowth vegetation to grow and then to increase biodiversity, or you just clear cut them to get more um, easy for management, harvesting there as well. So these case probably are quite uh, challenging for, for um, uh, some uh, comparing. Or sometimes I think that it's almost like comparing between apple and pears in just some cases. But uh, the next question here for um, Professor Liu again, that is uh, what is basically relation with bamboo forest and panda species? Yes, um, so that's a good question. So of course, pandas uh, depend on the bamboo as uh, food. And uh, in the wild, 99% of the food source is bamboo. So uh, there are many different species, as you just pointed out. And in different regions, the species are different. And But usually, the uh, pandas like those uh, 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 shoots, bamboo shoots, and the leaves. And uh, uh, if the uh, bamboo is too dense, they cannot get in. That's not good either. Uh, so um, it's very important, I think, to consider um, how to uh, protect the bamboo because bamboo also um, a flowering. When the bamboo flowering, the bamboo die off. And uh, usually larger area of bamboo will die off. That means that the pandas will not have access to the food source. So it's very important to have uh, multiple species in the region so that the, if one species of bamboo die off, then the other species of bamboo is still available for the pandas and for other wildlife too. Actually, in the area that we study, there are also other wildlife species depend on the pan, uh, bamboo, like uh, red pandas and so on and so forth. And of course, a lot of insects uh, species as well. So those are very important consideration when we talk about uh, about the, the bamboo and uh, uh, wildlife conservation and the forest. So we needed to take a systems approach to consider the interactions, uh, even though they are very complex. We that's why we do more research, take the interdisciplinary approach by integrating humans with uh, wildlife, with the bi uh, biodiversity. It's not enough just to focus on wildlife or just to focus on bamboo or biodiversity themselves. Actually, it's more important to consider human part because humans are the major source of uh, a problem, if you see. But humans can also be a force of conservation. And uh, uh, in our areas, and people love, uh, they love to uh, protect pandas, but they also have to survive. And they're not living in a luxury life. They're actually trying to make ends meet every day and uh, to feed the family and to feed the children. So I tell my student, we needed to take um, the perspective of local people in mind when we do our research. Just assume we are the local farmers, what we would do. We may do the same thing as they do if we don't have alternative livelihood. And, um, you know, without uh, electricity, there is no other way of uh, energy. And we have to cut down the trees for a few wood. And if we don't have food, we have to go to the mountain, the panda habitat to collect some uh, food source, right? or uh, collect the Chinese medicine to sell to the market and then to make money to gain some cash so that we can pay tuition for our children. So that's why we, you know, uh, really emphasize pandas and people equally. And uh, 
if we solve the issues for the people, then the pandas conservation is easy. Otherwise, there is no way we can yeah. do it. Thank you, Professor. Yes, it always that we want to conserve the animal in the forest, but the problem is caused by people, and the yeah. solution is to do with the people. The, yeah. the, the forest and panda or whatever that is, uh, they are sometimes the victim of the human. And yeah. then we have to do something with the human to conserve the, the other species. Mm -hmm. um, the next question is here is for Christopher. It is one of the questions is asking that is that when you mentioned because of the, con the bamboo conservation actions, the number of animal conserved in the natural, uh, natural reserve had increased. It was the action there. Do you hear me, Christopher? You are mute. You Christopher are mute. mute. You are still mute, Christopher. Could you unmute it? Yeah. You are still muted. Yes. You are now already unmuted. Yes. Um, yes. I've, I've had the question. Okay. I have. I had the question long, and thank you very much. Uh, uh, the professors, I greet them. Um, one very important thing here is that uh, the protection of the gorillas, particularly, was a, a national interest because at that time the number was low and they were getting lower. And uh, I'm being taken back to a professor who says when the pandas uh, when the people want bamboo because they don't have resources, therefore they would go to the forest to pick some resources and therefore deny pandas. In this case, here it wasn't like that. Uh, the, the fact also here was that uh, people were uh, resettled away from the, fo from the uh, protected area to give room for survival of gorillas, for example. And when that happened, even while they were still impoverished, they still lacked resources that shifted. They were not allowed there. They were given other opportunities to make their own survival and also provide livelihood for gorillas. That's why the numbers increased. If there was a win-win for the gorillas, then probably the people would have been given more opportunity because they had been settled, for example. Now here, as I say, it was a deliberate action by the government, making the people understand that we don't need to lose out gorillas and therefore leave gorilla habitat alone and with improved uh, 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 food, protection, and security for the gorillas, the numbers have gone higher. And it still continues because the numbers are few. 1,600 is a very, very small number. Uh, 2,200 uh, uh, golden monkeys, the number is still low. Uh, thank you, Christopher. The next question, this question also for Professor Liu. Uh, in the uh, June 19, 2019, the study published in Biological Conservation 234, uh, the panda habitats in Quinling and Minshan Mountain are at high risk of experiencing large scale bamboo flowering in 2020. What are the updates? So, Professor well, Lewis, yeah, so we're still doing some research on that and to okay. follow up on that study. And uh, uh, because that's a modeling re uh, research. And um, of course, sometimes the model results may be not exactly uh, the same as what in the field uh, you see, right? So we uh, are going to do more research and then to collect data and then to see what's happening in the in the real world. Of course, with the COVID-19, we have not been able to go out and uh, we are hoping to use remote sensing data to map the area 
to see these conditions there. And uh, but I think it's very important to go to the field to see what's going on. And uh, so um, I think that's very important. Okay, um, also, I want to just a quick follow up uh, to uh, what uh, Christopher mentioned. Actually, in our areas, even though uh, people go to the panda habitat to collect uh, resources, but also people are affected by wildlife. And uh, those wildlife come to their cropland to destroy the cropland. Not much uh, from the pandas, but from uh, wild bulls, the wild pigs. And because the habitat for the pandas recovering, then you also uh, uh, increase the habitat for other wildlife species like wild pigs. Mm -hmm. And those wildlife species increase their numbers and then they're looking for food. And the cropland provides a lot of food for them. So destroy the cropland. That's a kind of a similar issues and to the situation that Christopher mentioned. And uh, that way we need to find a solution too. So one solution we provide to the government is to provide compensation to the farmers. So if the wildlife destroys the crops and how much loss they suffered, then the government needed to, or the conservation organization need to uh, provide uh, compensation to pay back what they lost. So thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. This question is for general. Uh, can, can I make something? Okay, okay. Can, can yeah, I, go ahead. Yeah, I agree with, with the professor, and uh, some of those interventions are exactly what the government is putting in place here. And uh, deliberately because gorillas and golden monkeys are a high tourism attraction, mm -hmm. they even bring in very high resources. And therefore, part of those resources that are accrued from tourism, a percentage of them is given to the neighboring communities. Mm -hmm. Wildlife, but particularly not gorillas alone. They are buffaloes, yeah. they are elephants, they yeah. are all those. Yeah. So you mitigate this by finding a solution from the resource which yeah. you are keeping for the gorillas, but probably not allowing the communities to go and destroy yeah. the habitat for the gorillas. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, by the way, you talk about the tourism. There is a question for tourism here for both uh, panda and for general and for uh, gorilla as well. So could you please describe the mechanism for the development of natural bay tourism involving wild animal or endangered animal with bamboo forest and their habitats? So uh, sure. can I, okay, yeah, uh, Professor uh, Leo Stafford. Okay, yeah, as I mentioned in my presentation, the tourism is very popular in Onum and since 1980 and increased substantially over time until 2008 when the earthquake occurred and because the road condition was uh, bad and no tourist was uh, able to go there because of safety concerns and now the road has been repaired actually the uh, conditions are much much better than before so you see more and more tourists going there and um, to see the pandas, to uh, see the landscape. So there are different types of tourists. There's the one type of tourist that is uh, mass tourism, and a lot of people take buses and then drive cars and uh, you know take a quick uh, visit there. The other type of tourists actually uh, like to um, hike in trails and hike in the mountains, and they spend more time there. And uh, we're trying to minimize those uh, impact from those tourists to come to to the mountains to get closer to the habitat for the pandas and how to minimize the impact while provide the, um, the condition for the tourists to, to see and enjoy the landscapes and the wildlife there. I think there is a balance. And one critical thing is how to make local people benefit from the tourism. That's a hugely important. Yeah. In the past, usually is the tourism industry or the government 
take a lion's share of the benefit. And local people did not get much. So they did not have much uh, support from local people. And uh, so we need to help them with that. Yeah, thank you. Um, any other uh, uh, panelists would like to add that more in the area? Yes. Uh, 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 I don't that uh, in the in uh, an effort to to balance the two situations uh, protection of uh, the, the, the protected areas and the community the, their efforts to reduce on the numbers that visit gorillas at every other time every day each gorilla group is visited by only eight and once in a day so that reduces probably the mass uh, uh, visits or uh, uh, improves on the conservation of this animal. So that it's not stressed. It has time to feed when the, the visitors have visited for only one hour in a day and only eight people. Okay. And therefore, this, no, no, but I was going to say that it has also increased the numbers of uh, tourists in the two parts I talked about. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. By the way, one more question for you here. That it when you mentioned the two gorilla and uh, bay monkey, there is a question that those endangered species are not only eating bamboo, but probably they also need bamboo at living habitats, living areas. Is that possible uh, that the endangered species will be decreased? when the bamboo forest get lost? Uh, yeah. Yes. As I mentioned, uh, one of or the major feeding uh, a pattern of the two uh, species of animals is bamboo. The biggest food they eat is bamboo and during uh, sprouting. You will find them down on the ground feeding on bamboo as a major uh, nutrition uh, tree or, or, or you know however there are other species of plants they eat but they don't eat them regularly or as much as they eat bamboo okay. they may get extinct in a short while However, in the long while, they will be less affected. Either move off or eventually their numbers reduce. Because it's very nutritious, it causes them to the reproductive system during the bam bamboo time. Thank, thank, thank you, Christopher. Um, this coming one with as a question probably for both to Dr. Liu and Professor Liu, Liu, Dr. Liu and Professor Liu, this is a, how can we mitigate the bamboo flowering impacts on the habitat of endangered species? And can we uh, possible to plant native bamboo species in panda habitats? Who will? Dr. Liu I will, first. I yeah. will bring it, Dr. Liu. Uh, I think, uh, Professor Liu is uh, an expert in this area, so uh, he uh, gave this um, uh, um, a speech. Uh, uh, um, Professor Liu, uh, first. Okay. So All professor. right. Yeah. So actually, there are some. Uh, this is a very important issue. Flowering, as I mentioned earlier, when uh, bamboo flower, uh, then they die off. And so that will create a shortage for the pandas. In the 1980s, actually, there was a big die off of bamboo. So a lot of pandas actually died and because of the lack of food, because of uh, starvation. And uh, so one way to do it is to diversify the bamboo species. It's possible to plant native bamboo species from the starting area uh, that we saw there are the plantation of bamboo underneath of the forest and uh, the bamboo grow well 
I think that's very important to provide safety net for the bamboo, uh, for the bamboo and for the uh, pandas, and uh, how to control the flowering uh, cycle. I think that's a, a complex issue. A lot of research need to be done, but the, the general um, understanding is that when you have better climate, is better, and uh, for the bamboo to stay longer before the next die off. And there are many hypotheses and regarding the die off of bamboo. But uh, I think to um, have a diverse set of bamboo species, I think is a good approach based on what we know right now and then plant the native species in different regions. So that I think will help us to protect the pandas also provide the incentive for the local people because by planting bamboo you can local people can get some subsidies and uh, get some uh, 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 money or payback from that activities yeah thank you thank, thank you professor Liu. in fact that if you cannot control the bamboo flowering but you have to diversify the species genetic mm -hmm. so they will not flower at the same time in right. that way some mm -hmm. species or some cluster flowering, but there is some other still survive in there, so panda can have food or some other place there. So um, that is a way how we mitigate the impact of bamboo flowering. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think maybe I can also add one more. Um, uh, as uh, as far as we know, the uh, the 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 giant panda, uh, giant panda, they will. Uh, move to the different uh, uh, pitches of the bamboo forest. Uh, so they eat the bamboo shoots and the bamboo leaves and also the, uh, the, uh, the bamboo uh, comes of the young bamboo uh, during the different uh, time periods. So from the spring to the winter time. So actually they will travel to the different uh, um, pitches of their habitat. So there's also a um, need to uh, to diversify the uh, bamboo species across the whole um, landscapes, and that can provide the multiple uh, 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 different uh, uh, options for giant bamboo. So from uh, so from spring, some bamboo uh, uh, species is shoot in the spring uh, seasons, and and some uh, bamboo species they, uh, uh, they they shoot during the uh, summer time. So, so that, that can enable um, different uh, uh, food sources for giant pandas. So I think that also link to the corridors we, when we design the, uh, the, the conservation uh, reserve. So that's, that's a very complicated uh, um, uh, designing when we, when, we, uh, when we conserve the giant panda and also plant bamboo. Um, we, we will have one more question for um, Christopher here. Um, yes. There is observed decline in bamboo population in Upper Mountain Forest. Uh, Windy, Ha, Mahin, Mahika, Rola National Park in Uganda. Where and then mountain gorilla inhabit. What could be the main cause of the decline in bamboo population in the protected area? And how can it be halted to avoid lot of food for endangered species? Uh, what I'm aware about uh, is that the there is no decline, significant decline. Uh, these two forests are forests and one of the uh, crops that came up after uh, cultivation by communities you remember i told you they were evicted is bamboo and therefore other species that used to be there initially before or that are endemic are also coming they are stronger you know trees are much heavier than bamboo but there will be efforts, deliberate efforts to remove uh, other 
species to allow bamboo continue to grow because it is a major food source for endangered animals. It will be a deliberate deba effort. Yes, it is accepted. Probably some little bits of bamboo species being squeezed out, but it will be helped. So there will be no future problem on the endangered species of animals. There will be uh, vegetation, in vegetation man, uh, manipulation as a, uh, a, a plan. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, um, uh, Kripto. Jake, you be the last question for all three panelists. Yes. And we, from INMA, we always work and support the achievement of uh, FDG. The subject today very much related to FDG 15. It is about conserving life on Earth. Uh, the FDG 15 is about contact, restore, promote sustainable use of territorial ecosystem, sustainable managed forests, combat dissertation, dissertation, Desertification, war and river land degradation, poor biodiversity loss. Yeah, there are many issues need to be addressed to achieve the goal. Such as land degradation, habitat fragmentation, unsustainable forest exploitation. What you recommend us or suggest us, we should do more with bamboo in order to contribute to achieving. At DC 50. So, so wrong, you are breaking. I was not getting very well. You are oh, breaking. Okay. Really? So I could say one thing more like it. On the FDG 15, it is about protect life on Earth, it including protect, restore, uh, uh, territorial ecosystem. And the, uh, yes. We work at IPA, we promote and try to support the achievement of FDG 15. We try to do some effort in this, but we would like to have your recommendation or suggest uh, what we should do more with bamboo in order to achieve or to contribute to achievement of FDG 15. You can recommend yeah. well, I hope I, I, one other point. I hope I got to you. I, I hope I got to you, but uh, you said B, BCVP? Uh, at DC, oh, sorry. At DC Sustainable Development Goal. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, now, uh, uh, what, there are 17 mm -hmm. Sustainable Development Goals, and then we are promoting yeah. Uh, to the neighborhood development and work to us supporting the achievement of this goal. So the goal 15 is saving the life on Earth. Life on Earth. They wow. potentially can go contribute through saving and then the species and increase habitat connectivity and so on. But what you would recommend us to do more bamboo in order to contribute to achieve things it goal? Well, let me answer the way I've had it. Breaking. What I know is that um, there is a lot that is needed to improve bamboo. And the improvement of bamboo should not be only for, for endangered species. But improvement of bamboo should be for human uh, uh, utilization at the same time, human consumption. There is a lot of uh, interference at the moment with humans that need or that want to get bamboo, but they don't have probably a source of getting them. So it would be important that uh, we encourage uh, uh, and support the, shum, uh, the, the, the people to grow bamboo on their own land where it is, and in particular in our case it is possible, through any means 
or support they can get, whether through government, through uh, conservation agencies, through bamboo agencies, that will be very important and key. Thank you, Mr. Stoker. So, in fact, that what you say is, um, it's not directly contribute. Of course, it only already con directly contribute, but not only direct contribute, but bamboo as a kind of substitute product that will reduce pressures on forest and then provide alternative product as well and reduce pressure on the tree forest. In that case, you will be kind of indirectly, but conserving uh, biodiversity. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So, sorry, long we are breaking. Sorry, type it again. Type that for me. Thank you. You write that for me. Yeah, I know. No, 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 no. I just want to clarify the no. answer one, but that is fine. Yeah. Probably, uh, it's okay. The internet a bit uh, unclear from your side. No. So uh, what? What? What I mean is. You mean just the bamboo apart from yes. conserving, helping some endangered yes. species, it also helps yes. to provide a livelihood for the people. When the people have livelihood, yes. they get food, they depend yes. less on the forest. In that way, they yes. will, the forest will be protected. That also helps to conserve the forest in that way. Yes. Yeah, That's okay. true. Thank you. Any yeah, other yeah. comment? Yeah, uh, yeah, I would like uh, to I want, add, uh, I, Go ahead, Christopher. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Please go so, ahead, please go ahead, I, Professor. I would, uh, you know, add a few points. First, I think um, it's related to what Christopher said, but I will make it very explicit. First, they treat bamboo as a part of a couple of the human natural system. Because we cannot just focus on bamboo itself. We needed to consider how people affect palm, uh, bamboo, how wildlife benefit from bamboo, and how biodiversity uh, include bamboo actually, and uh, how uh, uh, bamboo can benefit the people as well. Um, so I think that's very important. Secondly, is to restore bamboo species. A lot of places. Bamboo uh, habitat disappeared or get uh, degraded. We need to restore them. Uh, thirdly, we need to monitor the changes in bamboo and the relationship between other biodiversity and the people. And uh, actually, um, monitoring or evaluating progress towards SDGs is one of our main focus right now. Uh, on the first day of this year, uh, my student collaborator and I published a uh, cover story paper in Nature, which is to evaluate progress towards all 17 SDGs, um, including SDG 15 that you just mentioned that these questions relate to. And uh, we also, just published another paper on the impact of international trade on progress towards SDGs in uh, the general nature sustainability. And I think this kind of research is very important so that we can identify what drive changes in biodiversity, including bamboo. And then to develop post-2020 biodiversity framework. Mm. So I'm part of this uh, uh, team of the Convention on Biological Diversity to develop post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Uh, so we had uh, uh, a meeting a couple of years ago. We just uh, submitted a paper to Nature to, for publication basically is to help the international organization and um, the Ch uh, Chinese government was planning to host the meeting uh, in Kunming in October, but due to the COVID-19, 
it, the meeting had been postponed to next year. So uh, I think we need to take uh, effort at the local, at the national, regional, and the global levels to address the issues related to bamboo and biodiversity and also people. Because one of the um, major component of the post 2020 global biodiversity uh, is to emphasize the benefits of biodiversity and the ecosystem to people. And uh, we need to consider that uh, aspect in order to better protect and uh, use bamboo and other wildlife and other biodiversity. So thank you. Thank you very much. Is anyone want to speak some more recommendations for us? Or? Uh, may I have a comment on this? Yeah. Oh, okay. um, for this region of land uh, designation, uh, I think the bamboo species uh, can uh, give a, a quick establishment of uh, 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 so um, the bamboo species can uh, function for serving of water and and uh, they may not only uh, plant the bamboo species, uh, but also can uh, combine combine the bamboo species and other uh, uh, tree species, especially some economic uh, uh, tree species. Um, uh, that means. The combination of the plantations um, uh, may long, uh, uh, last long uh, in the uh, in the stand. Uh, at the same time, I think the region of uh, land degradation, the local people may have a low income uh, um, in general. <laughs> uh, so the uh, bamboo uh, can uh, is a good source uh, to uh, improve uh, the local people's life uh, from bamboo weaving or some uh, uh, bamboo charcoal, uh, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, we can use bamboo in the way of what I call is indirect conservation of forest and and then the species. You bet that bamboo are fast growing. If you plant them only in three to five years, you can harvest them. You can use them for livelihood development, social economic development substitute for timber product, wood product, and good charcoal in that way, you will save for, uh, for uh, biodiversity conservation purposes. So in fact, that is a way we should make the use of bamboo for uh, other purposes as well. So I think we are already running out 30 minutes over the time. So uh, I think we will close the session for today. I would like to finally thank you to our three presenters for the present uh, excellent presentation and addressing all of the questions issued today. It's maybe Garcia, we have some announcement for the coming yeah. week. Yes, uh, uh, here I would like to share you some uh, uh, up, uh, upcoming uh, sessions of inbound webinar uh, under the SIM2 uh, uh, bamboo for poverty reduction and livelihood development which actually our session talked about uh, to, to, to the alternative livelihood is very important for the conservation efforts. So next uh, uh, Tuesday, we will have a session uh, on the topic of uh, bamboo farming system development. Uh, next Tuesday.